Wai Zhen Tang, a Chinese immigrant to Canada, arrived with dreams of financial success. He possessed an entrepreneurial spirit and a keen interest in the stock market. Tang meticulously studied the investment strategies of legendary figures like Warren Buffett. He sought to replicate their success, believing he had unlocked the secrets to generating extraordinary returns. Tang's confidence and charisma attracted a following. Investors, eager for high returns, entrusted him with their savings. He cultivated an image of himself as a financial savant, a Chinese buffet poised to unlock unprecedented wealth for those who believed in his vision. His investment fund grew rapidly, fueled by the allure of his supposed genius. Investors, blinded by the promise of exorbitant profits, often overlooked the lack of transparency in Tang's operations. He shrouded his strategies in secrecy, claiming they were too complex for ordinary investors to comprehend. This secrecy, intended to deter scrutiny, ultimately sowed the seeds of his downfall. The year 2008 brought about a global financial crisis. Markets tumbled, and investors braced for significant losses. However, Tang's fund, seemingly defying the odds, reported positive returns. This anomaly attracted attention, but not the kind Tang might have hoped for. The Ontario Securities Commission, responsible for regulating the province's capital markets, grew suspicious. Tang's performance, during a period of widespread financial distress, seemed implausible. The OSC launched an investigation, determined to unravel the truth behind Tang's improbable success. The investigation uncovered a complex web of deceit. Tang, it turned out, was operating a Ponzi scheme. He was using funds from new investors to pay off older ones, creating the illusion of profitable returns. The OSC's discovery sent shockwaves through the financial community and shattered Tang's carefully crafted image. The OSC investigation, meticulous and thorough, exposed the depth of Tang's deception. They discovered that he had fabricated investment returns, forged documents, and misled investors about his fund's true performance. Tang, they alleged, had been running a sophisticated scam for years. The OSC, armed with overwhelming evidence, charged Tang with multiple counts of fraud. The case, one of the largest investment scams in Canadian history, captivated the public's attention. Investors, many of whom had lost their life savings, watched in disbelief as the Chinese buffet was exposed as a fraud. Tang, however, maintained his innocence. He claimed that the OSC's investigation was flawed and politically motivated. He accused them of targeting him because he was an outsider, a Chinese immigrant who had dared to challenge the established financial order. Section 4. Legal Battles and Claims of Innocence The court proceedings were lengthy and complex. Tang, representing himself, displayed a combative approach, frequently clashing with the judge and prosecutors. He maintained his innocence throughout, claiming that he was a victim of circumstance and prejudice. Despite his spirited defense, the evidence against Tang proved insurmountable. The jury found him guilty on all counts of fraud. He was sentenced to six years in prison and handed a lifetime ban from participating in the securities industry. Even after his conviction, Tang refused to accept responsibility. He continued to proclaim his innocence, vowing to clear his name and rebuild his reputation. He viewed his prison sentence not as a punishment but as an opportunity to study law and prepare for his comeback. Section 5 Fallout and Impact on Investors The impact of Tang's fraud extended far beyond the courtroom. Thousands of investors, many of them elderly and financially vulnerable, lost their life savings. The scandal shook public trust in the financial system, particularly within the Chinese-Canadian community. The case also highlighted the challenges of regulating complex financial products and the need for greater investor education. Many investors, blinded by the promise of high returns, had failed to conduct adequate due diligence or question Tang's unconventional methods. The scandal served as a stark reminder that even sophisticated investors can fall victim to fraud. It underscored the importance of independent financial advice, thorough research, and a healthy dose of skepticism when evaluating investment opportunities. Section 6. Tang Behind Bars, Self-Education and Comeback Plans While in prison, Tang dedicated himself to self-education. He devoured legal texts, honed his understanding of financial regulations, and plotted his return to the world of finance. He remained convinced that he could rebuild his empire and restore his tarnished reputation. Tang viewed his conviction not as a defeat, but as a temporary setback. 
he believed that he could exploit loopholes in the system, circumvent the OSC's lifetime ban, and once again attract investors eager to capitalize on his supposed financial genius. His time in prison only seemed to solidify his resolve. He emerged determined to prove his critics wrong and reclaim his self-proclaimed title as the Chinese buffet. Section 7. A Legacy Marred by Controversy Wai Zhentang's story is one of ambition, deception and unwavering self-belief. He rose from humble beginnings to become a financial guru, only to fall from grace in spectacular fashion. His legacy remains a subject of debate, some view him as a ruthless con man who preyed on the vulnerable, others see him as a flawed but brilliant entrepreneur who was unfairly targeted by the establishment. Regardless of one's perspective, Tang's story serves as a cautionary tale about the allure of easy money, the dangers of unchecked greed and the importance of investor vigilance. It highlights the human capacity for both great ambition and profound deception. The question remains, will Tang Weijin fade into obscurity, his name forever synonymous with financial malfeasance, or will he find a way to reinvent himself and rewrite his narrative? Only time will tell.